Hello everyone, welcome back to your next installment of Top Dog October. This is your 17th video in a row. Daily uploads throughout the whole of October. You asked for it, so we gave it to you guys. Hopefully you're finding it really useful. If you've just clicked on this video for the first time, you've just met me. Hello, I'm Dylan, and we have been releasing videos every day for the last 16 days. This is day 17, and if you are preparing for the 11 plus and you think, oh, I could do with some extra help, well then you know what's coming, guys. I always say it it's our website so go to it it link is in the description down below and in the pinned comment you can subscribe for a whole year of premium videos that's four lessons every week of maths verbal reasoning non-verbal reasoning and english you get homework with every single lesson each week we look at something different and we've even recorded homework walkthroughs so you can see what your homework answers were just add it to your cart you get a whole year of access and use the coupon vote dylan because every time you use that it helps me out to avoid the forfeit. We're doing a challenge between Hayden and I. He's doing every other day of the videos. I'm here today. I don't want to do that hot sauce challenge, guys. The more of you that sign up, and again, we've been seeing it, those numbers creeping up, and every thousand views we get count towards a points total. Go to the community tab in our uh, channel to find out what the latest scores are. Never any spoilers in these videos. You have to go there to find out. But yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep pushing, guys. I want as many points as possible. But as always, we have on the screen your question from yesterday. These were related facts. And I'm going to show you the answer right now. Well done. If you put in the comments the answer E, 50 times 60 is 3,000. That is the same as 0 0.6 times 5,000, which is also 3,000. They are the same, which is what that question was getting at. But guys, you're here because you want to take a look at these Q perspective questions. These are always the most popular videos on our channel. I hope we rack up some views in this one because I want some more points. Essentially, we are given three pictures, but they're all of the same cube. Now, there are a few rules to know before we carry on. There are never repeated patterns on a cube. For example, this four square face here is the same as this one. There's not two faces that have those four black squares on them. It's the same face. What we have to do by using the hints were given and the views were given in one and two in this case, we have to figure out what would be on that face at the top there. Now, there are lots of different techniques to this. Sometimes people can just do it. We have that kind of spatial brain where we can imagine this dice being rotated and moved around, but there are also some tricks we can use. And quite often, we only need to look at one. Let's take a look at this cube here. Okay, now this cube, what I need you to do is really imagine picking up a cube. Now, if you find this really tricky, my number one technique for practicing this question is to get a real cube and draw on some patterns on the faces and move them and see what happens to them. Now, we're going to imagine picking up this cube and rotating it around so that it matches up these two here. Can you see this arrow and this double bump here matches up this double bump? And this arrow so these two edges are going to match with these two bottom edges right there now if we do that you might notice that this uh, face at the top with the four black squares that will just come round and nestle on the top and it will look something like this so don't be put off by the number of cubes you see in the question sometimes it can be simply going from one to the last one the middle one we didn't actually need it to solve this question we didn't need it we could have solved it using just the first one here. So we know that the face at the top is going to be the four squares. And something just to pay attention to, if you're really stuck, well, there are no repeated faces. So even if you don't know, I don't know why I've crossed this out, by the way. C is the answer. Ignore that crossing out. But what you can do is, because I'm thinking of my deduction technique, there are no repeated faces. So for example, you can see the arrow here. Get rid of the arrow. You're not going to have two arrows on the dice. Again, you can see this double bump here get rid of D. It's not going to come up twice. Now, the only thing left would be three other ones, but we know the logic and the answer was C. I don't know why I've crossed that out. So let's take a look at this one. I want you to have a go. First thing I'm going to do to help you is remember there are no repeated faces. So look at the last one here. We know it can't be another repeated face of this one. So get rid of D. And we also know it can't be this face here because it can't repeat. So it can't be B. Straight away, this is a three option question before we've done anything. What do you think has to go there? Have a go for me, see what you get. We'll talk it through after. Okay, so things to think about here are edges and where they meet. So I always take a look here and I'm gonna think, okay, look at this line. The base of the semicircle touches the face that we want to reveal. 
Now look at the next cube over here, the different angle, the same cube, but from a different angle. Here is the base there. So I know that these two blue edges are the same edges, which means that touching the base of the semicircle is a face that has two triangles on it. Aha, so I know it can't be C, but now we're left with either E or A, and they're the same shape, but rotated slightly differently. This is where it's just ever so slightly trickier. So now we need to use our ability to spatially change what's going on and rotate the cube. So take a look here. On this side of the semicircle is the point to the triangle. If we were to rotate this all the way around, that point to the triangle would be rotated all the way around and come here. So we know one point of the triangle is there and it goes diagonally across, Phew, like that. So we know that this line going from this side of the semicircle to the other side of the semicircle at the top is doing the same job here. It's going from this side of the semicircle all the way across to the other side at the top. So now we can fill in and we know E goes down, so it can't be E. The answer therefore must be A and it simply goes in place right here. This line matches up with these lines and it's just been rotated around. So these are tricky question types and it's harder because even moving the paper doesn't always help because it's a 3D shape we've got to imagine. So do go to like a board game maybe you've got at home or any kind of dice and sticky tape patterns on the side with paper and just practice moving it and see what happens as you manipulate the shape. Let's try one more together because these are quite tricky. So what's gonna go here? Again, I want you to use our technique from earlier. You can get rid of two answers straight away. I'm not gonna tell you which ones and then try and solve the answer to the question. I will tell you what it is. So again, guys, it can't be E because we've got that face here on the left. It can't be B because we've got that face already on the right hand side. So we're down to A, C or D. Now I love these question types because it's almost as if the cube, because we know it's the same cube, it's just going through it one step at a time. So to go from this cube to that cube, we rotate this up. So you can see we rotate this up and underneath here would be the black side, which we can now see, okay? Then we're gonna take this black side and rotate this cube around and we end up here and it brings the triangle into play. And then finally, to go from this cube to the last one, this cube, we're gonna rotate it down and put the black base back on the bottom. Now here's what's beautiful. I know that the black base is on the bottom here and I also know the black base is on the bottom right at the end. And now cubes have this amazing quirk where opposite faces are always, always opposite. So I know that if the black squares on the bottom here, opposite it was two circles, then I know in the other side, no matter how it's been twisted and rotated, it doesn't matter because if the black squares on the bottom, the opposite will still be the two circles. So just by going through that process of how the cube might have been rotated, and knowing opposite sides always stay opposite, I know the top there is the double circle, which is C. So lots of techniques there for you to have a think about and use however you see best. I want you to try and solve this. What goes here? Again, guys, look, you can get rid of two answers straight away. No one's gonna be putting A or B because they're already there on the cube that we can see, okay? So C, D or E, let us know in the comments down below. And as always, come back tomorrow and Hayden will tell you the answer. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure if you got this far to leave us a like, leave us a comment of your answer and share this, guys. Subscribe, put the notification bell on so you're the first one every day to catch our new video. See you next time.